Hello everyone and welcome back to the Node.js course. In this lesson you will learn about Mongos. Mongos is an ODM library and that is an object document mapping library and that basically means that it wraps the standard MongoDB API and it provides us with a much easier way to connect to and communicate with the database. Now it does this by allowing us to create simple data models which have database query methods to create get deletes and update database documents we make a model to represent that data resource now in mongos though we make a cmask first now the cmask defines the structure of a data type or a document store in a database collection it describes what properties it should have the type of those properties etc so for example a user data type might have a username bio and age now in our case we are working with blocks so we'd have cmask for a block now that's going to have three properties it is going to have a title a snippet and a body and it is also going to have an auto generated id property as well now these properties are all going to be of type a string and all of the fields will be also required so our cmask will define the structure of our block documents or like this and that will be a structure of documents stored in our block collection in a database. Now the next thing we do is to create a model based on that CMOS. Now the model is the thing that actually allows us to communicate with the particular database collection. For example if we create a block model which is based on a block CMOS, the block model will then have both static and instance methods which we can use to save, update, delete or read data from the blocks collection. So that's kind of the theory behind it. Don't worry so much if you don't fully understand it yet. We are going to have plenty of practice and let's start it by using Mongos to connect to the database. The first thing we have to do is install the Mongos package in our Node.js Express project. Okay. All you have to do is open your terminal in the current project directory and in the terminal you have to type npm i that means install mongos okay now you have to press enter it will take some time after this install it you can just use require methods to import that into your express app okay our mongos package has been installed in our package.json file here now go back to app.js and here i'm going to say const and i can say mongos for this okay now i'm going to use require and i'm going to pass in the package name as mongos all right now we want to connect this database connection url with our mongos for that here i can go ahead and say mongos dot connect all right now as a parameter we have to pass in this connection url here now this connection string is totally fine you can go ahead and check your mongodb and check your database name now if you do not remember how to get this connection string all you have to do is open your browser and visit to mongodb.com and then you have to sign in into mongodb atlas okay now you can press this cloud and go to atlas to visit to this page okay now you can click sign in if you have account i have account then i'm going to give my email address and the password okay now if you don't have your cluster you can create a new cluster by pressing this create a new cluster and you can provide a name as you want now in this cluster i have my database to create your database 
go to this collection section now in this section you will see this one this is the database Ashin TV node that's the database that we created earlier now if you want to create a new one you can press this create database after you create your database all you have to do is go to database access and create user to your database you can press this add new database user and create the user account by providing username and the password okay now how we can get that connection string okay let's go back to our clusters here our cluster is and now in the overview section you can see this connect button you have to press that and select the option as connect your application now here is URL you may have to choose the connection method and then you have to select some IP address otherwise uh, allow for everywhere okay now once you copy that you have to paste that in your code okay now you have to replace this one with your username that you added in database access here and then the password of that username okay now here you can see some database name you have to replace this with your database name to find the database name go back to collections and here that is the database name okay that is it and let's go back to the code now as the first parameter of this connection method you have to pass in this db uri that is the our connection string okay now this connect method is a asynchronous method that means it will take uh, some time to connect okay now after that we have to identify if this is success or not if this is success we can use then method okay now as a parameter we have to create a callback function we are we have to create a callback function and i'm going to add parentheses inside that and then we can say result inside of that parentheses now we can say equals and then ending angle bracket curly braces inside curly braces we can do whatever we want with this result okay now we can say console.log I'm going to say our connection is successful like this okay now how we can identify there is a error for that we can use the method known as catch now inside parentheses we have to create a callback function now we can say parentheses and then name is err that's for error now after that parentheses we can say equals ending angle bracket and then curly braces now we can say console.log I'm going to say there is an error all right now I'm going to go ahead and type node one and then app if you want you can say dot js but node one knows what is this is okay now this will show some error doesn't matter we can fix that but uh, we can really open our browser and go to local host and the colon and then port number that's working well now let's me check the console and I want to see connection is successful there is okay now let me go ahead and remove this deprecation warning for that go back to the connect method as the second parameter we can pass in an object like this and then copy this use new URL parser colon true and then paste that here okay now the second one in this object I'm going to put this here use unified topology as true I'm going to just copy that out and then paste that 
here okay the first one is use new URL parser colon true and use unified topology colon true okay that is it and let me go ahead and open my browser again okay that's fine now I'm going to just cancel the terminal by pressing ctrl and C and run that again nodeman app okay that is it and we are not able to see any kind of deprecation warning now all right now you can see we have a asynchronous method here let me go ahead and show you what's happening here I'm going to add console.log below of this connect method I can say console.log and then pass in something is happening here now I can cancel the terminal by pressing ctrl and c and run that again here you can see the first output is something is happening but connection is successful after this one that means this asynchronous method doesn't blocking any calls available below until it get success or fail the problem is here we have our app dot listen this doesn't waiting until this is happening then when we want to load some data from our database to the view there should be a error for that all we have to do is just move this app dot listen method to this connection successful place okay now we have then and then inside of that we are listening for request on port 3000 now let me go ahead and open my browser and click refresh okay that is it the next thing we have to do is collaborate with our collection for that I'm going to go ahead and create schemas and models basically schemas is the structure of a collection and the model is the thing that allow us to communicate with the collection okay now here I'm going to create a new folder in my root path of the project and then I can say models inside of this folder I'm going to create a new file I can say something like block.js all right now the first thing I'm going to import the mongoose package for that I can say const and then the name is mongoose now we can use require method and then the parameter is mongoose all right now let's create a new one for our schema that is schema and it is equals to mongoose and now we have a constructor called schema okay all right now let me go back to my mongodb atlas collection here we have our collection called blog that is the way we want to pattern my schema okay for that i can say const and then i'm going to say block schema as the name now let's declare this with the new instance of this schema constructor now we can say new schema all right now add parentheses inside parentheses we can put the object like this as a first parameter and then we can put our block title here I can say the key is title and the value is a string that means this title should be a string but there's another thing I want to make this title as a required field of the schema for that instead of put a one value I can put a object like this as the value of this key okay now the first one I'm going to declare is the type of that key that is a e string we can say the key is type and then the value is e string the next one is the required field then we can say 
required that is the key and then the value is true okay now uh, for better use we can remove this extra space to identify this is a key and value pair okay all right the next one is the snippet below of this value for the title key we can add the key called snippet okay now that is a snippet and then colon we can do the same as this value we can put the object and the the first one is the type that is a e string the next one is required it is also true okay the next one is the body we can put body here and then the colon we can create the object as the value for this body key and then the first one will be the type and then that is a string the next one in the object is required field that is required key and then the value is true that is it and then here in the schema constructor we can put a new parameter for options we can put comma and then we can put a new object like this but here is a uh, some error i can see there is a ex additional curly bracket i'm going to remove that okay that's fine and then the option that we are going to use here is time steps when we are going to update data delete data and then add data we can put this time step option for get the current time status of that data change okay now we can say timestamps is true the key is timestamps and then the value is true that is it finally we can create our model now for that let's say const the name is block now you can define uh, any variable name as you want now this is equals to mongoose the function we are going to use is model okay now as the first parameter for this function is the collection name of our database here our collection name is blog unfortunately i'm going to create a new collection here for that i'm going to just press plus button and then the collection name i'm going to put is blocks okay i'm going to just delete this block collection and then the collection name is block i'm going to just drop that here all right now we only have our blocks collection now let's go back to the code here i'm going to pass in block what actually that is blocks but the thing is when it is come to this model function the value that we are passing in here will be automatically converted into pluralized value that means this value will automatically become block to blocks okay that thing will be automatically happen that's why we keep a word like this for example let me put another one if we put dog the model function will automatically convert this into dogs that is the thing that happening here that's why we put block only here okay all right the next one we have to do is put our schema that is our block schema then we can say block schema here all right that's how to create our model 
call blog we can define any name here as you want and you can customize the schema as you want okay that is it now we can export this block model and assess this mongos.model function with these parameters outside of this class for that all we have to do is do you remember model dot exports and it is equals to block that is it and we can use this model everywhere as we want outside of this class okay that is it for this lecture and we will see in the next lecture thank you